Hey everyone, this is Julie and welcome to SoFab Reviews. Today, I'm doing another anime review, The Apothecary Diaries, and joining me is Rascal Entertainment. Hello, what am I not here? <laughs> I love having you here for the anime since the majority of it we watch together, the things we don't. I cover by myself, but it's always so much fun talking about your favorite shows and what you like to make fun of with friends. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, The Apothecary Diaries is an anime that I really have been wanting to cover for the longest time. And it premiered back on Octo in October, I should say, of 2023. But we started this anime just a few weeks ago, and I think it's been three weeks now, and we yeah. love it, and we loved it. From the very start, and we love it now. All right. But before we get started, be sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get me some so fab reviews for Netflix as well as many other types of videos. Yes, and thank you for your support and for subscribing. We appreciate it. Yes. Now, you may have seen a video that I put up a very short clip of an indirect kiss between Jinshi and Mao Mao. So that should be your first indication. I'm in love with the ship as well as the show. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Apothecary Diaries, it's a manga, drama, mystery, romance that was a novel series and then passed off to another publishing company and became a light novel series with 14 volumes and a manga with 12 volumes. Mm -hmm. And it's really an interesting story. Like quite a few Japanese anime, this series set in a fictional country modeled after Imperial China. Mm -hmm. And you've got characters that are living in the time period, dressed in the time period. So it's a period anime. Right. And we've seen a few of these where, like uh, Color Cloud Palace and others, where they are Japanese anime that take place in... Uh, certain period of China. And usually it is this particular one. So it seems to be a really popular uh, type to use. And for this one is more or so about the happenings in the inner palace. Imperial court. Yeah, right. And I think Mama's job is that she tests things to make sure it's not poison. Because clearly this happens so much in here they got she's gotta test every single thing they eat, drink and touch to make sure someone didn't lay something with poison in and it. And in other ones we've watched that are based in Imperial China, yeah, that's always the thing. Yeah. So kind of scary how much this happens in these shows and probably that period. But it is interesting how they tackle it each time. It's sort of like a uh, investigation mm -hmm. show as well, like how did this happen, who's the culprit, what's the evidence, it's sort of almost like a, a mystery show in now, itself. based on what you just said, you were telling me recently that in Japan at one point, uh, Columbo, that was the detective series, I think it came out in the 70s, mm -hmm. our Nana watched it, was hugely popular. Yeah. And this is one way in which you know it was popular because... The way that she breaks down scenes and investigates evidence, tests for poison, yes. and she knows all this information is similar to how that particular character did things on the show. Right. So it comes through in here. Right. What's really kind of unique about this particular anime and manga is that it's popular with all groups. Yes. But the novel, the initial novel series, was targeted at a female demographic. Mm -hmm. The light novel series was targeted at a male demographic. Right. And the manga is targeted as a seinen. So it's odd that they went for both male and female depending on the form of media that came out. Right. And it's become popular with everyone. Right. Now, all genders love the show. Yeah, and that's true because especially with how it's written, you're enjoying the characters for gods of your reasons. And also the way they have drawn them in here, they have something appealing for all genders, basically. If some are there, just look at the characters. Well, you have almost every character there be some sort of level of attractiveness. So <laughs> there's never any shortage of attractive characters in here. Now, we need to mention this is taking place during the Tang Dynasty. Mm -hmm. And Mao Mao is a commoner. Yes. And she works in what... A brothel district for us now but she's, uh, yeah. she's not she works in the district but she's not An taking customers right she actually just helps out and does other things 
and she's being trained by her dad to for medicine. Yeah. This is how she knows all this information. She is still a teen. She's not an adult. And she ends up being kidnapped while she's out picking herbs and things mm-hmm. and taken yeah. to the palace. And she ends up being a servant at the palace. Mm-hmm. She starts out working in the inner court. Mm-hmm. And then by episode what is it, 18, she ends up working in the inner court. Right. I'm sorry, the outer court where Jin she is. And we don't want to spoil too much. But yes, he's involved in how she ends up right. in the outer court. So, as you mentioned, it's got all these mysteries. It's really fascinating, and it's done in a unique way. Because we have watched other anime based in Imperial China, Mm -hmm. and they've been different. This one is really different from those, as well as other animes. Like, it's kind of, uh, they've melded different genres together. Mm -hmm. And elements from traditional Japanese anime have been added to this Chinese-based anime. Right. And it's, it's worked really well. So let's get to the characters because they've got some really interesting characters yep. voiced by some amazing voice actors. So Mao Mao will start with her since she is the MC mm-hmm. and she's voiced by Emmy Law. Mm-hmm. I'm not familiar with her, but she's Neither doing a great job. Her delivery, her sarcasm, her dryness, everything she does, especially when she's excited when she finds poison, her being able to eat expensive foods like... Uh, Haruhi yes. and Oran. She is perfect for this role. She was the perfect casting. Yes, absolutely. And then we have Jenshi, voice in English by Kaiji Tang. Yes. We all know it's Gojo. Gojo. So he's perfect for this role. Right, it's like anything with Gojo in it, you know it's going to be a hit. So that had it a lot for it. <laughs> and his character is impossibly beautiful. It says that when you see it, when you watch it, Male and females found him attractive. Mm. He's so beautiful that even when she tries to dress him down as a commoner, she has to apply all types of makeup and prosthetics and the clothing and put uh, dull his hair down because it's so shiny and uh-huh. silky. And even when she does all that, put cotton in his face, he still looks attractive. All right? So it's like, well, it's impossible to... To make him look unattractive. It's hilarious. Now, that being said, this particular character can have anyone he wants. And all the women who are working there, the courtesans, they are beautiful and Mm -hmm. shapely and all different ages. Yeah, they show you that. Yeah. But he falls in love with Mau Mau. As soon as he sees her, it's so hilarious. In the intro, you see... His hair fly back like he's in a L'Oreal commercial. Right. His eyes get big. <laughs> it's hilarious. And he immediately is smitten with her. And my mom is as cute as can be and really pretty. And when she puts on her makeup and stuff, she's a doll. But when she's dressed down as a commoner, mm-hmm. she puts freckles on so no one will look at her. And she is not shapely. She has a boyish figure. She is straight up and down. She doesn't have the boobs and the hips a lot of the other yeah. women have. Right. She's very, very short. Incredibly short. She doesn't dress up. She has no fashion sense. No. She doesn't wear makeup. And she wears her hair in two braids. I think so, yeah. And just like in, um, what's the name I'm thinking of? Princess Jellyfish. Yeah. He falls for her. Yes, and it's absolutely hilarious. Yes. I think, also, you can think of, like, with... Kashima in in reverse. It's absolutely hilarious. Yes. But you love them as a ship. You love them as individual characters. These characters are memorable. They're fun. They have depth. They are having character growth. It's wonderful. So quickly, uh, you also have voicing some of the characters. Molly Zane, Jim Faronda, Trina Nishimura. I know you know who she is. Yep. Monica Real, we all know. Yep. Serious Strange. And let's see, is one more I really want? Oh, Rico Fajardo. Yes! So you've got a great cast of dub voice actors. And if you haven't seen this anime, you are missing out. I know you think it's probably run of the mill or it's set in China, it's not in Japan, it's mm-hmm. something, it's during a different period, it's not Taisho era like in Japan, and it may not be interesting, but you are so wrong. You've got murders. You've got oh violence, you've got mysteries, you've got sexual innuendo, you've got fan service, you've got right. intelligence, <laughs> you've got fun, 
you've got shipping you've got a lovable two lovable main characters this anime has everything and it's beautiful to look at yeah not just jenshi but it's beautiful to look at the animation yeah it's just gorgeous so i'm so glad that rascal kept pushing it you've been wanting to see this yeah let's just go ahead and watch it yep add it to our country roll list i have been keeping up with everything on twix twitter x and the more and more i will saw the more and more i wanted to see it so we are current now we just finished episode 20 mm -hmm. which was a pivotal episode if you're not watching the anime or into it it's one of those episodes where you break the internet everyone is is speechless and breathless horrified at something that happens and waiting to see what's going to happen in episode 21 we're almost at the end of the series and yes we did wait a little while to talk about it because we will cover it in full on our Paul's Animation YouTube channel. Right, so this is just pretty much how we feel about the series so far. So what I really want to know is how many of you are into the Apothecary Diaries? How many of you love it or have read the manga? If you've watched the anime and or the manga, let us know in the comments below. Yes. If you haven't, it's available on Crunchyroll as far as I know exclusively. I could be wrong. We're watching it on Crunchyroll. So if you have Crunchyroll, go there, watch it, come back, and share with us your thoughts. We really want to hear what you have to say. Yes. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the button that's done. So fab reviews for Netflix, as well as manga, anime, and many other types of videos and reviews. Be sure to visit Rascal's channel, Rascal Entertainment. She's got so much content, so much fun, and be sure to check out her current Wish video which we put up in tandem mm -hmm. after doing a Wish podcast on some deleted scenes mm -hmm. from the movie that you don't want to miss. Yes. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate every time you come. Oh, you're welcome. And if you enjoyed this, be sure to like and share. It really does help my channel out a lot. And I appreciate you so much. You're awesome. <laughs> so. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Rascal. I'm Julie. Have a fantastic day. Continue to be happy, healthy, and whole. See you next time.